powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Russ Riesinger. Are your elderly loved ones getting the care they deserve? That was front and center on Capitol Hill today as Senator Steve Daines confronts the issue with other lawmakers in hopes to improve care for Montana's oldest generations. Right now, more than 3,700 Montanas receive nursing home care. Today on Capitol Hill, Senator Daines talked about some of the challenges with the in industry at a Senate Finance Committee hearing. Now, Daines told the committee 20 years ago there were more than 100 nursing home facilities across the state. Now there are just about 70. Meanwhile, in the last 10 years, the senior population in Montana has grown more than 40 percent. The committee talked about things that can be done to help the state and the country's aging population. That includes ramping up efforts to make telemedicine accessible to those living in rural communities. Another topic, more transparency and more training for those working in facilities to make sure their patients are being properly cared for. Danes referenced a case in Lewistown where a state-run nursing home was cited after failing to protect their patients from verbal, physical, and sexual abuse. According to reports on 13 occasions, Officials were not notified of incidents that included abuse in the facility's wing, which houses dementia patients. As part of the investigation, one staff member said they had not been trained on how to help manage resident behaviors. Uh, these kind of reports uh, are saddening, they're concerning, particularly as these patients are some of the most vulnerable Montanans who are receiving mental health and long-term care services. The Lewistown facility was forced to pay more than $250,000 in fines after that abuse came to light. Also today on Capitol Hill, an emotional moment at a Senate hearing on sexual assault in the military. Senator Martha McSelly revealed she'd been raped while serving in the Air Force and that her attackers included a higher ranking officer. Nancy Cordes has details. I was ashamed and confused. I thought I was strong, but felt powerless. Arizona Republican Martha McSally stunned her Senate colleagues, describing how she was sexually assaulted more than once during her 26-year career in the U.S. Air Force. The perpetrators abused their position of power in profound ways. And in one case, I was preyed upon and then raped by a superior officer. I stayed silent McSally was the first female fighter pilot to fly in combat. Now I'm deployed to D.C. to fight for Arizona. After four years in the House, she was appointed to the Senate in December to fill the seat formerly held by the late John McCain. I was horrified at how my attempt to share generally my experiences were handled. I almost separated from the Air Force at 18 years over my despair. Like many victims, I felt the system was raping me all over again. She is part of a we'll growing sorority. Lawmakers survivors. who have come and forward to say, me staff. too. The chief of staff held my face, kissed me, and stuck his tongue in my mouth. McSally said she's going public now in the hopes it will lead to reform. I share the disgust of the failures of the military system and many commanders who failed in their responsibilities. After that hearing, the Air Force released a statement saying that it is appalled and deeply sorry for the criminal acts McSally endured. Reports of sexual assault across the military have jumped by 10 percent in just one year. Nancy Cordes, CBS News, Capitol Hill. In other news, the gray wolf could soon be taken off the endangered species list entirely. Acting Interior Secretary David Bernhardt announced that a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service proposed rule would delist the gray wolf and return management to the states and tribes. Back in 2011, the gray wolf was delisted in Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, and parts of Washington, Oregon, and Utah. The plan would delist the animal in all lower 48 states. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife spokesman says recovery of the gray wolf under the Endangered Species Act is one of our nation's great conservation successes. A group opposed to delisting sent a statement saying 
On its face, this appears to be politically motivated. We look forward to taking the Fish and Wildlife Service to court should its proposal not be based on what the science tells us. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service also proposed a delisting rule during the Obama administration. The proposed rule will be open for public comment after it's published in the Federal Register. On the weather front tonight, Bob, we are finally seeing our long-awaited warm-up, but that also means ice jams yeah, on our rivers. Exactly right. If people have assets or equipment near the rivers, this is the time to start thinking about it. Here's what we want to show you here. And so we're going to talk a little about the ice jams and lowland flooding. And what we can show you here is that recent cold snap has put a lot of ice on the rivers. And plus, uh, the ice jams have created ice dams, and that can cause some lowland flooding. And we've already started to see that in some parts of the state. Waterways need to stabilize on the newly formed ice and that usually takes about one to two weeks and that's the one to two weeks that we see in front of us and so here's what can happen ice jams can cause rapid rises in water with little no little or no warning and that's why we recommend that you start moving your equipment and livestock up to the higher ground because the ice jams they are a coming and that means we're going to probably start seeing a lot of flooding around some of these rivers we'll have your forecast in a few more minutes all right thanks so much bob tonight a gesture of friendship unity and compassion between two rival basketball teams at the end of february columbia falls bull rider and parent Bo hill was accused of holding a racially insensitive sign at a columbia falls versus browning girls basketball game now Bo says the sign had no racial implications and was a tribute sign but the columbia falls principal made a post on the school's facebook page condemning the sign regardless of its true meaning well today in browning the columbia falls girls basketball team presented a Pendleton blanket to Browning High School in honor of the spirit of sportsmanship. Pendleton blankets are given to commemorate important events and have a centuries long history in native communities. Some difficult news today from longtime Jeopardy host Alex Trebek as he announced he has advanced pancreatic cancer. Trebek is 78 and says while his prognosis is not encouraging, he will fight. Here's Tony Ducopel. Trebek delivered the shocking news with his States signature poise. This week, I was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. Alex Trebek. He plans to keep working, even as he fights an advanced disease with a five-year survival rate of less than 10 percent. Trebek recently talked to CBSN about the appeal of his Emmy-winning show. America is a very competitive society. I can throw the ball farther than you. I can run faster than you. I can do better on Jeopardy than you. Oh, yeah? Let's find out. David. What's Hawaii 5 -0? Nope. What is one life to live? You are close. For the millions of people who watch Jeopardy each week, this word describes a beloved host who isn't giving up. What is courageous? I plan to beat the low survival rate statistics for this disease. Truth told, I have to, because under the terms of my contract, I have to host Jeopardy for three more years. Trebek has hosted Jeopardy for 35 years and more than 8,000 episodes. In today's video, he told fans, keep the faith and we'll win. We'll get it done. Tony DeCopel, CBS News, New York. Well, some big news tonight about the Billing St. Jude Dream Home giveaway. Our community, our region, our Q2 viewers have already purchased more than half the tickets for the big drawing. Not only good news in the fight against childhood cancer, it also means you'd better get your tickets soon so you have a chance to win this classic design home in the Ironwood subdivision and a slew of other prizes along the way. Now, we'll, of course, be divulging more about the home as we get closer. Right now, Janelle is standing by with more reasons to get your ticket now. Janelle? Russ, the teams of scientists, doctors, and nurses do so much more than find cures and give medical care. Every discovery, every forward step they make, they share with the world. He loves people, so he, he, has enjoyed, he enjoys coming here because he gets to see so many people. And he doesn't remember the sick parts, does he? No, he doesn't. He doesn't remember no. being sick. No, and I am thankful for that. But Erica remembers. Just weeks after baby Luke was born, the concern of hereditary eye cancer had this mom asking questions. They wouldn't give them answers. And although doctors in Colorado assured her Luke was just fine, her gut didn't give up. A little persistence and pushing eventually produced her worst fears, retinoblastoma, tumors in both of Luke's eyes. It was scary, emotional. I was worried. 
Erica says she didn't get angry. She was certainly scared, but the medical teams at St. Jude had answers and sought alternative solutions. They felt like it wasn't responding like it should, so they kind of adjusted it to where he was doing the laser treatment and the chemo at the same time, and fortunately that combination did work for him. Everything that we learn about every tumor is helping someone somewhere, maybe at St. Jude, maybe not, figure out how to better treat that tumor and how to get rid of it for good for any kid that would happen to have it. That mindset is not just part of the difference that sets St. Jude apart, it's also the mission that goes on every day behind every wall on this campus. Nothing that we do at St. Jude is proprietary. We don't have any secrets. If we find something that works, we want everyone to use it because we aren't interested in making ourselves big or making our name big. We're interested in curing cancer for every kid in the world. Within 72 hours, scientists here can come up with a protocol, send it across the street for manufacturing, and have it at the bedside of a sick child, potentially easing their symptoms or even curing their cancer. As soon as we learn something, we are publishing it and sharing it, and scientists all over the world are taking our ideas, not only our cures, but anything that we find. So kids like Luke can see the world and keep on loving people. Now Luke will not be considered cancer free until he's five, so he heads back to St. Jude every six months for follow up. And it just so happens that Luke's doctor is from Montana. Dr. Rachel Brennan was born and raised in Helena, attended Capitol High School, then Carroll College, and she tells us much of her family still lives there in Helena. So another example of how St. Jude is connected. Tomorrow night at 530, we are going to take you inside the house for the first time. Yeah, you'll definitely want to tune in to see that. In the meantime, you can head to KTVQ.com, click on the community tab, the St. Jude Dream Home giveaway, and you can find a full list of the prizes and a link so that you can purchase that ticket. Coming up on tonight's 10 o'clock news, things are brewing at the National Barley Growers Association. We are going to check in. And later in sports, state tournament basketball is underway. Scott shows us if Cole Strip's guys are still perfect and semifinal bound. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.